Who it sounds like a woman, yes, which I'm surprised. Does. Hello, hello, everybody. Happy Monday. It is Monday. Monday jump start. We're excited. We love Mondays here at Happy Paper People. Welcome, Definitely. welcome. Welcome, welcome. I don't see anybody here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually haven't even gotten on YouTube yet because I was looking yeah. up books from yesterday. So Actually, there's three people here. Nobody's just jumped in chat yet. There's Sarah. Hello, hello. I have to and put the volume we down or you're going to be on double. Uh, now that we went live, it will show up on people's notifications yeah. and they'll start jumping in. Hey, Glennis. Glennis is here. Sarah is here. Hi, Glennis. Welcome. welcome. Doug's out my window mowing the front lawn, so don't know if you can hear that. But hmm, it's a small lawn, there so it won't take long. How are you guys doing? It is Monday. Monday, don't start. Monday, Monday, da da. Yeah, hey, Margie. That should be our in incoming music. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Really. Oh, this would be a pretty one to use. Hi, Sada. How are you? Hey, Sada. I have um, I have your package ready, but the box isn't full. Do you want me to hold it until we do some more sales? It'll be about three weeks before we do a sale. Mystery Monday. Yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? It kind of is Mystery Monday. Secret Monday. <laughs> um, yeah. Bye bye to the heart. Oh yes, the heart is still up. Oh, I can't shoot, see. Shoot, shoot. Sorry, it was um early this morning, and I was still really, really tired. So I, I just thank you. Margie. Thanks, Margie. Um, well, honestly, she's doing that. Um, going in there. I don't know if you guys saw, but I did a whole bunch of stuff with antique books this weekend because they were in a really messed up box, and my husband thought that if the stuff and if the box was destroyed. Then the stuff inside would need to be, and it isn't, obviously. Um, I just wanted to show you some really pretty writing that I found. Oh, we love pretty writing. And it says, Miss Laura Kendall, Wilmington, Maine, December 25th, 1889. And um, this is something special. This was made, this book was... Um, the Knowles company was from Bangor, Maine, mm. which these came from being up there and obviously it got mm -hmm. destroyed. But I wanted to show you something. Look, they have ads so, in the back I love of the book. I love those books where they put ads in them. And this, list. it says, please return to Harlan Johnson, which actually was a friend of mine, Shelley's great, great uncle. Oh, wow. Yep. And this book right here is actually about the Civil War mm -hmm. and the person who it's about um, was from Dover. And But in the book, it just says D, period, because they didn't put right. um, the name of the town. You knew because it was only going to be right. read in that area, right? <laughs> Nobody outside that area would ever read it. Not right. 100 years from now. Nope. But I did have fun reading it. I mean, this Dr. Warrington had some pretty good uh, stuff. And there's actually names in here I recognize from my hometown. Like Gary cool. is one of my um, family names. Cool. So hey, that one, this one I was just actually looking up when I came in because I can't tell what it is. Mm. Um, it's got no co thing on it. But as I, I took a picture of it, it's actually called Things by Their Right Names. <laughs> I love that. And, and this book is from before, what did I say? 18, I think it's like 1870 something or, or earlier than that oh, because the person actually died in 1840. 1840. Yeah, 1840. The person died in 1827. Right. So that oh. is lot to be fine with that. Yeah. Did you get the, yep, she got it off. This is another one with beautiful handwriting in it. And this Ooh, one is yeah, Caleb is. H. Cushing That's from true. the old judge, which actually was a judge in my hometown. And I know the Cushing family. That's and this cool. was February 2nd, I believe, 1884. And this one is the Pickwick Papers. If anybody's interested in this one, I'm oh, definitely going to discuss it. Pickwick Papers? Yep. Yep. Nice. Something else I found 
you guys would be interested in. And now I want everybody to look at their books to see if they ever see these. In this book here, there's this little tiny tag. It's very stuck to the book. Oh, that one I might be able to get off. And it's actually the bookstore that it came from. So that's how they knew before we had like the, the stamps or the whatever, how yeah, they knew yeah. where the books came from or these little tiny tags, cool. which I think I would love to find a whole bunch of these. I bet that people just pulled them out and threw them away. I'll bet they did. That's and this cool. right here is a beautiful book. Um, the back even, look at how cool that is. It must have gotten eaten by moths or something. But <laughs> this one has one from Bangor, Maine. And Whoa. the family that's on there, The um, it says Betts Bookstore. Betts were um, from my hometown. Ah. So that was some of my fun that's things that cool. I found while I, oh, and then did I show, I showed you guys this one and a picture. And it's the Don Quixote from 18. That is um, very cool. 1865. And there is one, one name in here and it's George Sawyer. You see that there? And wow. there's some writing up there. No idea what that is. But when you open it up all the way, there's writing here. Don and like it says, okay. That's right. So it's old book page. And these are probably lithographs that were not mm -hmm. printed properly. That they, they didn't think anything was using them because that's what they had. That's what they used. That was like the norm. Right. They just used the leftover papers. And then in this one right here, which is totally destroyed, I just peeled, like literally just peeled this off. I didn't know because this was covering it that uh -huh. it was actually anything, but it says Portland, Maine, government, state, town. Oh. Wow. And there's that on it. And then you can see how, how it was pressed in. This was pressed uh -huh. into that because you can see it in the paper. That can you see the cool. impression in the paper? That is cool. So I love this kind of stuff. It's cool. Yeah. So, well, she was going through all these old books over the weekend, and we love old books. So got me thinking that um, it's been a while since we did anything with book pages. We had a while where we were using book pages all the time, and we've got a lot of new people, and it's been a while since we did book page things. So DM agreed to um, show you how to deconstruct a book, basically, if you've never done it. I mean, you know, not, not like it's super difficult, but um, if you want to keep the cover and be able to use it, if you want to keep the end paper and be able to use it um, if you want to take out part of the pages or all the pages, whatever it is, you know, so she's going to, you know, just spend a few minutes on, on that, showing you how to do that. And then we're going to show um, a bunch of things that you can make with book pages. And I thought it would be fun for you to call out um, something that you like to make or know how to make or would like to know how to make out of book pages and see how fast we can make one may not be completely embellished because we want to do a bunch of things, give you, give people a lot of ideas, but mm -hmm. um, uh, that would be fun to see how fast we can make whatever. So those are great finds huh? all the way in her garage. <laughs> yeah, they were. And I have a lot more boxes of books out there. These were just the ones that were um, the box was destroyed. Um, they, the other boxes were not allowed to be touched <laughs> by my husband who was cleaning out the garage. <laughs> so you are now full screen if Okay. You like to go ahead and take the floor. So one of the things I wanted to show you once again, this is a Washington Irving book. Um, they used that, that paper there, and this one is pretty destroyed. However, this is is the actual paper it's not a photo of the love that cover paper it's the actual paper you can actually see the paint on it so i'm going to keep this one as it is it is about the rocky mountains it's by washington irving and it tells about how um the astor family moved west with all of their um entrepreneurial things and it talks a lot about um the mountains and uh Canada and all that kind of stuff, but the gorgeous, gorgeous paper in this. 
um, you can't find stuff like that anymore. I also wanted to show you how this book right here was bound. Now, what they did to bind it is that they cut little tiny slivers into there and put a string. You can see how the string is stuck out here. See those strings? But the binding are these and they go through the inside of the book. Let's see if we can find a center page. It's almost an early version of Coptic binding. It's almost an early version. And then what all these did is that these, these were holding them together and then that got glued on. Um, I have cleaned up these books as much as possible. Any place that there might be any little bit of black mold, I have put something on it to hold it there. In fact, that's what I was doing earlier. I spray painted, spray painted, um, sealed most of these with some sort of, because um, this one is just beyond destroyed, but it's really cool looking. So you don't want to do that. Um, so I'm going to go on to showing what I would do with a modern book. Um, this book right here, the cover was destroyed and I just started pulling it apart like this. And instead of pulling it, you can pull it really lightly and they stay in. They don't tear the paper. So these are when they're really old. Um, you have to look at how they're bound. Uh, the cover fell off of this. Um, this one is about um, manners and dressing and table etiquette and all the different etiquettes. This book was from, I believe, 18 something. The Essence of Etiquette, that's what it was called. So I'm going to go on to a really new book. <clears throat> this is my new book. I'm going to lift you guys up so because this is a big book. Um, this is a hint to something that I'm making for the retreat. So you see how there's a hole down in there? You almost could drop something through there. In fact, I've done that before. But what we want to do is we want to get the back off of this, but keep, I want to keep this here because this will be the front page and the back page that I will use for, um, the book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it very carefully to see how it's put together. And I know this isn't a very big book, but you can see it actually is sewn in. See how I can pull that. Whoops. Sorry. Pull that away. I have to look at two screens to my left while I'm doing this. You can actually pull the pieces out. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to find something small. That's not the one I want. Here's the one I want. Ugh. And I'm just going to go down and I'm going to actually take out the inside of the book first for this one because it is a smaller page one. If it was a big one, I might try to get the whole thing off. But this is um, get the whole thing off as a big group. I don't want it ripped. So I like to do each and every one of them. Let's see if you can see as they come out and you can hear that it's the little piece of um, thread is cutting because you can hear that little snap. And yes, you could do it with a sharp, but also if you do it with a sharp, you also can tear that inside page that I want to keep and you don't want that to happen because then you won't be able to use it. And then that took that part out and I believe there's only two in here. There might be three. So that page right there goes with the front cover and it is glued in. So let's see what we're going to do next. We're going to pull this one out. Let's see if I can find the center, which has the strings in it. These you can just go up and pop them and hope you don't scratch up the paper that you're using. Uh, this is a beautiful picture, so I do plan on using it, but 
once again, you can always figure out a way to cover it if you do make a little scratch in it. I've done that. See, I just made a pro problem there. Um, page will probably be cut up at some point anyway to be added into the journal. So I'm not too worried. But once again, you can... Sometimes you have to use what you have. And these right here, sometimes if you've got the first one cut, you can just tear them or you can come back with your scissors once you've got something underneath it. This is a little thing that I tend to use a lot um, when I'm pulling apart books. Now, yesterday when I was pulling apart books, all I used was a pair of scissors because they were basically falling apart in my hands. Um, and um, by the way, my dad would be having a conniption. He's probably rolling in his grave right now with the how bad those books looked because oh, they were all his. So I know he's upset at me. So what's left in here is the paper page in the center because It's actually attached to the front page. So these would be the full page. Well, this one might not be, but let's see. Oh, yeah. So they're glued in. So these I actually am going to have to very gently peel away. And as I do it, you're going to hear it pull. But I check both sides as I'm doing it to make sure that they're staying in line and nothing is getting ripped beyond where it should be. Um, the story is pretty easy to follow and you can put the pages back as you need them. Um, and this one right here, you can see how it's right down the center. And I am not going to be using this right here. Now, most people would have gone and cut that right there, but I didn't want this part and this part damaged, which would have very most likely gotten damaged because every time I've tried to do it, I always end up messing it up. So I am going to use a bigger one because I just cut that. And I'm going to stay down it. And it's almost like, you know, when you do paper, you can just keep going straight and it's not going to. Yes, a straight edge would be great right now. I probably could have done a straight edge with this one. Uh, sometimes it's, you just use what you have on your table. Actually, do I do have a straight edge over there. <laughs> I just put up a new uh, um, magnet. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is you can actually see where that is. And that's the book binding. And I don't want this, I don't want to lose much of that on there. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that little corner right there. And I'm going to cut this corner right here and see if I can get this, this up without ruining the paper from the center, from the from here. So I'm going to try, actually try to get it up and keep it. Let's see. Do I want to keep this and put it on it? I don't know. So um, let's see. I try sometimes to see if I can do this. And then I'll decide later if I want to take the whole book apart, depending on how much my, how many stays I put in it. Whoops. See, I already tore it, but that's okay. Because I do know it's probably going to be bigger than this, but I haven't decided what part I want this on, whether I want it on the, the um, front cover, want to use it at all. So it would be from here that I would then decide how to use this cover. Um, now, my thought is I'm probably not going to put and his cat on it, and I'm probably going to take the um, people off. I do like the graphics. This right here doesn't necessarily need to be there, but it's a nice square. You could actually cut it out and use it as a window. So that's my thoughts on this right now. Klimt was an artist. Um, he loved his cats, which was so sweet. I didn't realize he was a big cat lover. Um, but most people remember him for all the gold he used. And the kiss um, was one of his famous um, paintings. So, 
that's how you pull apart a book like this. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> They're just enthralled in watching. Clint They're and the enthralled in watching, huh? <laughs> No wonder I like Clint, Margie's. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, he loved his he loved his kitties. So I am gonna see if I can get this page out. This one I might have to do with this, and I hope I don't go through the paper. It's very, very hard if you don't want to destroy something when you're you really have to take your time on it. Um, I there's been many times I've messed up and I end up having to fix it but if you don't have to fix it it's better that way but you can always fix something i'm serious there's no if i had ripped this page oops sorry if i had ripped the whole page off i would have been able to figure out a way to put it back on and keep it so that is how you rip a book apart there are different ways to do it too you just have to see how it's bound that's the most important thing. To yeah. Me. Size of the book and, and as you said, how it's bound is the most important thing for seeing how you can yep. take a card and save it. So um, uh, keep in the back of your mind that there will be a challenge month coming up later, later this year, having to do with book pages. Not this month. We're already, we're already in the middle of April and have we're doing it in April, but um, but there will be something coming up later. So let's make some things out of book pages. And these will be things you can start making right away and use in your journals or your folios or um, by themselves even. And, um, and then keep some of them in mind for down the road if we happen to get a challenge. Oh, I did not just do that. I did. I did totally did just. We do that. can't tell what you did because I'm still full screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I was sewing. Um, I was sewing my. Uh, anyway, yeah, I, I, uh, I took a page and to make a bookmark. And this is one of the quickest and easiest things to do, and you don't have to sew it. I love the look of it sewn so. Often, if I don't have my sewing machine out or handy, I will just stamp it with the sewing. But I'll take a, um, a page, and this has kind of cool numbers on it, so I'll put that in the middle, and then I'll fold it in thirds so it folds over itself like that. And that makes it three times as thick so it's stronger because, you know, one book page alone is not strong enough for a bookmark. For us, and you can kind of make it as wide as you want then when you do it like that. So that's what I did, and so then I sewed around the outside, all the way around the outside, and then I just grabbed some scraps to make a little cluster on the inside as decoration, a flat cluster. So when it's you know marked in a book, it's still flat, and so. Um, here's the page number down here. So this would be the bottom. This would be the top. That's how I had it all set up. And last thing, I grabbed this little bird nest. Let that be the little focal point. And it was supposed to go uh, the other way because this is up. This is down. I sewed it on upside down. Oh, that's okay. So now, and yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't matter for the bookmark. The bookmark is now going this way. Um, and it's okay The the cluster doesn't really matter, I suppose, which way the cluster is. So what I thought was the bottom is now the top and vice versa. So that that, that is right side up. So it just makes people gonna, think. The only thing that's going to bug me is having the number upside down. So I may put something right, right up there. Actually, that's where I could put a, um, an eyelet or something, um, with a little topper on it. But, um, yeah, that's probably what I'll do right there because I do need that so otherwise it's totally fine um, and I love the sew marks on the back so <laughs> that was a good exploration wasn't it Sarah thank you DM no problem so I've been pulling apart books for a long time <laughs> let's make some things out of book book a uh, book pages bookmarks book covers book pages um 
this is one of those things we kind of looked at each other and said, um, where do we start? Because there are literally hundreds of things that you can make out of book you paper. You do with them, yep. So many different things. So um, I thought maybe we'll show a couple of simple things that if somebody is new to using book pages, some simple things to do, and then a few that maybe you haven't done before if you've been using book pages for a while. And then we'll let you throw out some things and see how fast we can make them because maybe you have something that you've made, but you would like to see if we do it differently or something that you think could be made, but you haven't done it yet. And you'd like to see how we do it kind of in that way. So, so let's start with this. The first thing I did was the bookmark and that's a super easy one single page folded in thirds. And I only use one page because it is folded in thirds. So it's three times as thick. So that is just, it's super easy. You can ink that in any color you want, or you don't have to ink it at all. Um, as embellishment on it, I literally just took some scraps. I've got a little thing of scraps here off, off my desk. Um, and I'm just trying to use scraps of whatever is sitting around to use it up. Those scraps need to be used and you hang on to them because you know they're usable, but when are you going to use them? Now is a perfect time to use them. So bookmark is a great place to start. And that can be any size, by the way. And I know some of you have already looked at this and said, bookmark, I see a belly band. Oh, very good. Yeah, the bookmark can be a belly band. If it's a shorter one, it can go in a shorter journal or it can go horizontally as a, as a belly band. Um, this way would be a vertical belly band. And you, again, make it any size you want. <clears throat> Let me show you something else that I like to do. And if I got a book and I want to use the cover or it's got 500 pages, that's a lot of pages. And I do like for things to be um, sturdy enough that the book pages just aren't going to get totally torn up. This is a fairly new book. It's the pages are still pretty white. You know, they're not, they're really not aged at all. And that's totally okay. Um, some things I like really aged pages, uh, other things not, and other things it doesn't matter. So this one, I take two pages together. I'm going to go full screen for a second. I take two pages together uh, so that it becomes um, a little more sturdy. And this one here first, I have not sewn the top. Okay. Um, and there's something different that I've used this for, but I kind of like to do them in stages because it can be used for so many different things. So I will prepare a bunch, uh, kind of like a mass make, whether you like mass make or not, um, I can make a bunch of these and they can end up being all different things. So if I do this and I leave the top unsewn or unglued, and again, you can just glue it. And if you like the look of the stitching, you can just stamp the stitching on or write it with a black pen, black marker, or gel pen. Mm -hmm. Easy to just write some uh, X's for zigzag, zigzag stitch. Okay, so if I leave it like this, I could glue this onto a page on three sides and have a pocket there. And I could literally have a pocket in here too. Then I would probably open this up and cut this thumb notch down a little farther if I'm gonna do that so that I can see clearly that there is a pocket inside and a pocket behind. And then I will leave a bunch of them like this so that I can decorate them when I go to use them so that I know what the, the theme of the book is, okay? Others, I will go ahead and just um, sew right across the top or glue right across the top. I might not even sew this, I might just glue it. And so here's just some with, with some different stitching around them is all, all, they're all the same, the same thing. This one I did put a little bit of glue on the top. So this one is together. So then if I want to use this just as a pocket like this in a journal, here are some scraps, literally off the desk, scraps, pieces of stuff like this that has just been torn up. There's a couple odds and ends tickets, you know, just you've all got those just sitting around your desk. Um, music pages, book pages. This is pretty white, so I could use a nice dark book page. This is a little scrap of um, Jen's paper torn off on the corner. 
Um, I've got other scraps here that if I didn't have those enough, that this is a scrap of uh, cardstock that would match it and go fine. And then I've got these little pages. I love these. This whole little pack of um, fussy cuts that are wonderful little focal points. These little numbers are great, but um, these are great little focal points. So I just cut the telephone out of there. It's a perfect little focal point. Okay, so I have to tell you this. I saw a video this weekend and these a parents, husband and wife, they set a phone, an old fashioned phone like this. This is an office one, so it didn't have these buttons. But you know, a rotary dial phone. They set a phone down in front of their two teenage boys. They handed them a notebook with a phone number written on it. And they said, you have four minutes to dial this number on this phone. It literally took them four minutes and they didn't completely figure out how to use that phone. It was so funny because they're like turning it a little bit, seeing if they can push it. You know, they, and every time they were like, nope, got to start over. They lift the receiver and set it back down. Like that was the reset on the computer. You know, it was hilarious thinking, wow, the most basic of basics that we think just pick it up and, you know, push the numbers around. The mom said, said, pick up the receiver, you know, pick it up. When, and one of them picked it up and listened to it. She's like, what do you hear? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that was a dial tone. It was so funny. And they were, they, you could tell that they were intelligent boys by the way that they were um, reasoning through it, doing it together. It was, it was pretty funny. So, yeah, that's a whole new party game, how to use antiquated equipment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there is um, the next step, which would be embellishing. And if you want to sew these on, then you'd want to do it now. So you could sew it on before you put this down as a pocket or anything. However, you can put together things like this and make some just general clusters and you can sew the clusters if you want and then glue them onto these things. Even if it's already in the book, and it looks like it's sewn on because the cluster itself is sewn. So nobody would know. All right. Here's another one. <clears throat> Same kind of thing. Uh, scraps of paper. This one is actually, you can probably see there, it's a punch, punch out. We punched, oh. we punched oh. out a bunch of circles. That's just a scallop punch out. I always save those pages when I punch them out. It's two or three. Um, whoop. Two or three book pages glued together, three, maybe four. Those are really old. I probably better glue those corners down. They'll rip off. And so I just, um, I had these sitting here. So I tore around one of these, which on this one was the, the um, binoculars, and just put that inside that punch. The edge of the punch got torn, so I just started the the cluster there and it's just a way to use your punches. I could have inked the edges and maybe it would have been a little more visible. It's very visible in person, just not quite as visible on the camera because probably because you're not so close, but you can see the scallop there. You could still ink it by just sliding something underneath each one of those scallops. Absolutely, absolutely you could. Okay, so you could put this down as a pocket itself. You could make it a double pocket itself right there. You could use this as a corner. Uh, tuck spot. You could do all kinds of things with this. But one of the other things I like to do with it is turn it into a whole large pocket. And this is fun. It can be floating in a journal. It can be attached to a journal. It can be um, three sides glued down so you still have a pocket back here. Or it can be the two sides to be a tuck spot in a journal. It can be a flip out from a journal. So this, you can tell, is the same as these. So then all I did was take this and put it together with two pages on the back, doubled up so that it's thick enough not to be all torn. Same paper or the same, same page from the same book, which is not that one. It is this one. So these... It's much easier to do those kind of things with newer paper. Yes, there are some pages. I'll show you a couple in a minute that I... I won't use for these because when you go to bend it, it's just going to crack, crack, it's going to crack and break because it's so old and luscious. Right. Now the little, the little things that you've put on the front, the little. Uh, yes. 
things could easily be out of really old paper. Yes, exactly. These, I love to use that old, old paper because they're going to be sewn down, they're flat or glued. They're not going anywhere. So this is a full page there. And so I kind of look at if I'm going to make some and I might use it for this or this or this. If I were wanted to fold this down about where would I want to fold it? And I figured, yeah, that would be about that would be about the right height right there. OK, so if I were going to make the front part, this becomes the back part right here. If I were going to make the front part, I would want to cut it to be a little bit short of my fold point there. So that's how these got determined their size, how their size got determined right there. Okay. So I can make several of these, just the back pages and be ready to um, glue those on. I could make some of these, make them into full pockets with the fronts. So they're ready to go, but not embellished, not decorated, decorated. Um, so that I can just decorate them according to what book I'm using them in. Okay. Um, there are at least a dozen different ways to do these. Let me share a couple with you because if you start doing it and you're like, oh shoot, I should have sewn that before that I ruined it. No, you didn't. That you just, it, there's so many ways to do this and you can save it no matter what you did. So here's the thing. You can sew around this outside page, which is the back. You can sew around the front. Okay. And now they're both sewn. Oh, I didn't do one that's just by itself. And so when you go put them together, I don't really want to sew over it again because now it's just going to look cluttered sewing. So now I'll just glue it down. And when I glue that front on the pocket, it looks like it's sewn together, right? Front and back, it looks like it's sewn because the individual sides are sewn. So you can just glue that down. The other thing that you can do is bring these two together, put a little bit of glue in the center. This is a perfect place for glue stick and then bring it over to this one and put a paper clip on it and then just start sewing. I tend to start with one of the bottom corners and I go up around the whole thing and come down the other side and back here and double over that. And then I might round the corners. I might not just depends how I'm feeling. Um, might put a little embellishment on it. <clears throat> I'll wait and decide how to close it later, but that one's ready to go. Now, if I do that and this pocket is ready to go, then I can't sew onto the front of the pocket because it's already together, right? So if you wanted to have some that you've already sewn on, but again, if you sew the clusters together, the scraps together, and then just glue it on, it looks like it's sewn on. So it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. If you glue it down, and then you go, shoot, I wanted to sew that. Don't worry, you can sew over it. Or if you already sewed it, you can glue it. You know, it doesn't matter. It'll work any which way you do it. So this is one of my favorite things to do because you can put extra ephemera in this or journal cards or some special paper that is folded um, to go into the journal to write on. Okay, And I use fairly newer um, book pages with that. I have some that are aged really nicely, but they're not super old and so they don't um they won't crack and break another thing you can use for those is fairly new pages that have been dyed with color that's um, pretty so just scraps of whatever's sitting around is what i'll do with those clusters you could also make them out of music page i like to use the music page um for the clusters you can make smaller one of ones of them this is an anne of green gables and it's getting pretty old, but I could, if I put two together, I think it would still fold and not um, crack. So you could make a smaller version here. This one is much older and don't really need to even ink it, but it's going to crack, you know, as soon as I fold it, it's cracked. So um, I wrote that as torn page ephemera to make sure that I only use it for torn page ephemera because it's going to crack um, lots of different types of music there. Okay, I really like when I deconstruct books to hang on to the pages. They're kind of like end pages. Sometimes there's one between chapters, um, but there's always a front and a back, and they're a little bit thicker usually, and they age really nicely, and they're just... Um, 
typically plain, nothing on them. I really like these because they look old, they look aged. And if I'm making something, I thought I had something. I don't have something. If I was going to make um, something like this and maybe make it a little bit smaller, put the cluster on the front, sew it up, and um, it could be a journal card. So the back, I could just journal on. Then I would take one of these and tear it to size and add it on the back and then just sew that um, together so that that's solid journaling space. However, it's still old paper, aged paper. It really goes with it. It looks really cool, uh, but it's just still plain space in order to write. Um, it's hard to write over the top of the words. You can, but it's a little difficult to do that. Anytime I do punches, I, I save these. Um, this is three book pages together, so they're already nice and sturdy. There are, I have some out of um, cardstock, different prints that are like 12 inches long, the, a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Um, and I'll keep those and use them as borders or something cool on something like this. Here's another one, this just punching some big circles uh, to make different things. There's three pages together, so it's nice and sturdy, but I can tear this off right here. And if I put a piece of paper underneath it that has something cool on it, it can highlight a focal spot, you know, in um, in a cluster there. So um, all different sizes. So if you make smaller ones, obviously you'd want smaller clusters and doesn't matter whether they're scalloped or um, round. Use that as an edging there. Here's one that I tore with a ruler and used um, the other half of it. So that's got a nice, uh, if you can just, there you go. That's got a nice torn edge that um, would be nice to use on embellishing those. So, so many things you can do with book pages. There's just a couple items to get you started. I really like these pockets because if I make some things in preparation for these pockets, then I have multiple things ready to go to be altered or embellished at the last minute that I could pick out three or four of these, use them all in the same journal and use them in different ways. You know, like the full on pocket as the uh, glued on pocket or tuck spot, turn one into a journal card, all those kinds of things. So I don't know if everybody's asleep today or if everybody's busy crafting because why well, didn't ask? Because we didn't give you a list of things to have today. So didn't ask if you were going to be creating along with us, but um, who's awake? <laughs> Is everybody here just to hear what the prompt items are for the second week of April? I haven't even done the ones for next, for this past one. Sorry, uh, guys. Busy <laughs> week this week. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. You can whip those out in no time. I did put some links to some lives that we've done with altered paper clips. Um, there were a couple of people that said that, that they hadn't done altered paper clips before. So it's so a couple of different ideas. And on all these challenges, we really want to encourage you to think outside of what you normally do. Not the box, not off the plate, all the things. Just think differently than what you would typically do. And let's see if we can try some different things. So Julie's awake. Sarah's awake. Oh, she's working on retreat stuff. Cool. Glynis is awake. Margie's awake. Okay. That will be me after this, Sarah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think outside the book. I love it. So um, throw out some something or some things to challenge DM and I and that we could make with a book page. Um, and you may be thinking of, if you say something like a triple pocket or whatever, you might think of it in one way and we might do it in a different way. That's so, true. <clears throat> oh, well, you got a lot to get ready for retreat too. So I guess if you get that done first and then you can pick up the challenge, great. Um, a triple pocket, Glennis says. <laughs> I had to go say that, didn't I? Mm -hmm. All right. Triple pocket, DM. We're going to make us a triple pocket. Okay. Me. And I will make a triple pocket in two seconds after I finish doing what I'm doing. What are you doing? 
I'm actually cut now. I'm using the um, very old um, uh, etiquette book. Oh, cool. Um, this was not necessarily from the etiquette book, but I put a page from the etiquette book in there so you can actually open it up and see that read what it says and right uh -huh. now we're using it from the soirees music halls uh -huh. and lawn parties and so i took the top of that this portion of the book out and added uh -huh. that to the front and this is the front paper from one of the books that i that disintegrated in my hands oh um very beautiful so i yeah. added that and i was just taking out the um these two things that are in there that technically I wish I could make them. Unfortunately, I can't. I'm looking to see with my light to see if I can cut it so that it's not going to mess up anything so mm. that I can glue them together as a little pocket to put on the back. Cool. But I could maybe make it a triple pocket now, couldn't I? So these are the um, what somebody how you would write out why are they the same i don't know maybe i should have read the chapter first i don't want to tell you what book this is that i'm pulling from not you but margie oh because this book was already destroyed i didn't even realize what book it was and it was already destroyed so i started using book pages and then one day as i was making something i looked at the page and went oh wow but it was already destroyed i didn't do it i promise so I'm not going to let it go to waste. Right. We don't like wasted paper. You see that, Margie? So what I'm doing here is I'm putting one and I'm going to make a little pocket to put on the back here. Um, because this would go into a book and you could put just slide it in. And actually, it's sort of interesting sometimes to leave this information in there because I really actually like to read what you should have done back in... 1890 something <laughs> for instance <laughs> yeah for instance for ladies desiring to give garden parties the following yeah. bill of fare will be found sufficient cold oh. rolls mixed sandwiches brown bread pickled tongue pickled tongue nice yeah pate de foie gras jellied chicken cold yeah. birds lobster yeah. salad charlotte <laughs> Rousseau, which is actually <laughs> something, I can't remember what it is, but I know that it's an actual food. Mm -hmm. uh, biscuit, glace, uh, fancy cakes, fruit, lemonade, iced tea, and strawberry acid. Wow. I don't know what strawberry oh, acid is. But that's what you should have when you have a... Uh, yeah, Margie, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I can't believe it. But I'm not going to let it go to waste. I am going to use every Alice page here. I'm going to glue this together a bit. I'm going to double up these pages because they're just a wee bit brittle because it is pretty old. It's an old paperback, a small paperback, and I guess I just haven't ever seen Alice in that form. Oh, I should only put a little bit on. I could actually... Would really like to sew this since my machine is right here. A lot of times it's not right here. Now that I put um, glue on it and don't yes, okay. want glue in the machine, no worries. There are many copies of that. Rare books are a different thing. Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm assuming it wasn't rare because it's an old paperback, but it is old. It is definitely old, so because the pages are nice and brittle, but but I'm gonna use it. Okay, so I know what I'm gonna do, and now I put glue on this and wish I hadn't. Um, Perfect. Oh, I like Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Yes, and Humpty Dumpty, I believe, is even in one yeah. of the Alice books. Humpty Dumpty. This is both of them. Alice in Wonderland, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Yep. Who stole the tarts? 
<laughs> in my house, it's who ate the tarts most of the time. <laughs> really? <clears throat> oh my goodness. Mad tea party. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm just waiting for this to dry. Just thinking about I'm actually going to make this into a pocket here too, because it's actually pretty, pretty sturdy, but I can make it sturdier by just adding paper on the back. This one. Because I've got a lot of little pieces here that I pulled things out. Good. Just on the top. Hmm. And just on the bottom. My grandmother was a school marm and would have whipped my butt if I'd torn up books when I was a kid. I guess it's still, you know, that was one of the most difficult things for me, me to come to terms with when I started doing junk journaling and um, making of old things, using old things to make. Because uh, I love books. I have always loved books. And it was really difficult for me to tear a book up. Um, I did realize though, or I learned because I didn't know, um, I didn't know this. So I learned that there are a lot of books that just when they're falling apart, they're old or they just kind of fade out of um, re relevance, you know, that kind of thing. They just get tossed in the trash, yep. burned up, thrown away, whatever it is. I didn't, I guess I never thought about that but I didn't know books just got tossed in the trash. Um, so, and rather than a book get tossed in the trash, I would much rather take it and give it a new life, which to me is honoring this book and the life mm -hmm. it had, making something else out of it. Um, now, granted, not every book I use is probably one that would end up in the trash, but... Um, some of them are trash so that they should end up in the trash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of books that even you get a dollar tree that are just, just stupid books. Right. But we all love our books and we um, honor and, and hang on to our favorite books that we have up on our shelves. But yes. yeah, I, I hate the thought of bo any books going into the trash. Why can I not pull this straight? Same with me. I really had a hard time because we were, I mean, if we wrote in our books, we were in big trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You were only allowed to put your name in the book, the oh. date, and who sent it, who gave it to you. Well, I even had a difficult time doing that because writing on oh. books was like sacrilegious. Oh, yeah. No, we were allowed oh. to write that in our books. But um, I mean, when you find two of your favorite books, you know, destroyed because like I did yesterday and you started yes. crying. Oh um, um, yeah. I cried when I found these two books. Right. They were two of my favorite, especially this one right here. The whole top is ruined. But it, it's actually called a cost the costume party. And I loved this book. But oh, you see it says cool. my name and my Auntie Mary Lou brought it for me. That's but I think cool. I'm going to use this one along with um it's a small world um book and make that a um multicultural costume book like oh, yeah. i have a bunch of stuff like that so this this the kids were supposed to get dressed up in the way from what country they were from because they had a lot of friends from different countries I'm and then gonna... this one was actually i don't know if anybody remembers these books they 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 were made specifically for you and typed specifically for you oh, and they yes. put in your name and they put that? in your friends names and like even the back of this book has my dog's name That's and it has cool. my old address <laughs> go ahead send something there i won't yeah. get it <laughs> so but you can really get emotional when you find your old books <laughs> i'm just sewing my triple pocket and then i will instead of gluing it and then i'll show you how i put it together Super simple, but um, super versatile. And I got a bonus for you on this one, Glennis. 
That's good. Now, yeah. Okay. So here it is. So I could have sewn on each one of these and I could have done that before putting them together then. I chose not to. Um, I could also put tabs on these if I wanted to. I could just put some small tabs right there. Um, you know, I, I don't know. But, uh, this is a perfect kind of thing to have on hand because you can grab it and embellish it for whatever project you're doing um, and make it, you know, match. So let me show you how I made it. It's super easy. You need four because this is um, not super brittle, but a little bit brittle paper. I'm doubling it up. So I'm using four pieces, two and two. If it's thick paper or strong paper, or you're using scrapbook paper or something, you'd only need two pieces of paper. So, oh, cool. The back, this one says Alice in Wonderland, a caucus race and a long tail. Okay. So show you real quick, super easy. You take one piece of paper, look at this. You take the other piece of paper on top of it and just decide how much space you want there, your pocket. So you can make that as little or as much as you want. Put it about right there. Now I'm going to hold them and set it down, fold it back. Uh, you can't see the back because it's on book page. But when I fold it back, this is going to be the same as this by default. So all I want to do is line this up so that my space here is about the same as those. There we go. Put it down, flip across, boom, there you go. Then usually I just glue the sides, bottoms all ready together, and you're ready to go. You could cover that with washi. You could leave it alone. Um, typically, I don't put anything on it. You could uh, stamp it with stitches if you wanted or not. Um, I don't always do that. This one I decided to stitch all the way around that. <clears throat> but yeah, that's a super easy triple pocket. One, two, three. And when you glue it in, if you only glue three sides, there's actually a fourth pocket in the back. So quad pocket, triple pocket with a quad bonus if you want it. So then you can just embellish that however however you um, are decorating your book. I'm going to go ahead and sew this one too while I've got it folded already. How is yours coming along? Well, I've taken a picture here. I've I'm not going to use this one, but I'm going to use this one. And I'm actually making a triple pocket this way in that I used this right here. I flipped it up to make a pocket. Uh -huh. I added the top of the page to that so that things will get put down. So this will become a pocket. And then I'm going to add that to this pocket. So it's one, two, and this is going to be put on the back here. So it will be three. Cool. I sort of wanted it to go this way. I guess I could if actually I could because if this bends this way, you're still going to see that stuff over there, like that you have to eat pickled tongue. <laughs> because I want everybody to see that at my party, you would be eating pickled tongue. Have you ever had tongue? No. I've had pickled pig's feet. Yeah. That was one of my dad's favorite things to eat and make us try. Tongue, no. I never had tongue. I grew up on a ranch, buffalo ranch. Right. And so we ate buffalo. My uncle, one of my uncles had a cattle ranch, so sometimes we have people eat as well, but um, most of the time we eat buffalo. And you don't waste anything. Right. I don't eat it all, so... We ate tongue and a heart and liver and all the things. And actually, if tongue is prepared properly, it's really good and tender and very flavorful. I actually have heard that. I just have never had it because. Pickled bony. 
I've never had pickled bologna. I've never heard of pickled bologna either. Mark I mean, likes pickled bologna. You'll get over it, Sarah. <laughs> she still has a hard time tearing up books. Yeah. Every now and then, but you know, we, we'll get over it. You'll get over it. You just start, do, just, uh, start, start doing, doing it. it. And the yeah. other thing I always have to do before I tear up one that's actually Edgy. old, I always have to look it up to see how much it's worth. And if it'd be yeah. better for me to just yeah, sell, hang on to it, <laughs> hang on to it or sell it. Um, Wow, Sarah loves pickled bologna too. Wow, never I've heard never of it. heard of pickled bologna. Head cheese. Yeah, I can pass yeah. on that. Yeah, my husband eats. Um, um, I just lost the name of it. It's really gross. He eats it for breakfast, but it's like head cheese. Blah. Scrapple. He eats scrapple. What's scrapple? Scraps hmm. from the pig made into. Oh. Me into um with eggs or something. A loaf. Uh huh. Yes, he has. He cuts them up into like quarter inch thick squares, uh, uh, yeah. rectangles, yeah. and then he fries them and I then know. puts them with eggs. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> so, are you guys thinking about what you want to challenge us to make uh, next? Yes. You got. You're getting a lot of challenges these months um, with our monthly challenges in the group. So. Thought you might like to throw out a challenge to us. I mean, even though we might do the challenges, we still come up with them. So um, sometimes it's fun to have a challenge that you don't know what it is. And, and I am going to actually offset these so that you'll be able to see oh. the people. So that's, you know, you look and see, you move things around as you're doing it. You don't want to just see a ship's steering wheel. In fact, I don't care about that. <laughs> so I'm even going to offset it way off to the side of the page. Another thing that is really nice to make these kinds of things with is your uh, gel print. You might yeah. have gel prints that you don't love so much. You like the colors, but it's not really any great design. Use them for things like this. When you fold them up, you don't see any design. You just see the color here and there. So great way to use those as well. You can also tear those up and use them to embellish the book page things that we're making, like the, the pockets or the um, belly bands or bookmarks. All right. Yeah, I came in, I was sewing, and he said, you do know that's paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes. <laughs> so there is a triple pocket for me. I should have gone, oh, no. Oh, crap. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and there is a double pocket on the back. And I oh, have some things. Very cool. So Did this is done with a, you know, page. You can stick it in. And I like to leave pages like this that have interesting information on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Julie wanted an over the page pocket, a pocket okay. that folds over the edge of a page. Okay, I can do that. Let me Maybe change me. up and get this down here and then. Um, I, if you don't, do not. I have a couple different ideas. I'm trying to decide which direction to go. Um, Julie, do you want it over the edge so that you can see both so that it will be a pocket on each side of a page? Like a tip out or a, a tip or, in or a flip out? Or I was debating between that and or one. I was just going to say things are starting to dark dirt. on here too. I can oh, really? See, yeah. I can't see the sun because I've got a tree in the way. Ah. Uh. Which really sort of sucks. Let me go to this window and see if I can see it. <laughs> I can um, if I lay on the ground. That's funny. This I pocket, do have my glasses. This pocket could be sewn in the signature 
And so it's going over the top of a page or around a page. Um, but Julie, you're looking okay. for one that flips out or tips in, right? Over the page. I know what she means. Oh my God. Um, Julie. Yeah, Julie. Okay. So you want one that tips in or flips out? Yeah, Margie, go, go turn the light on. Send Cappy over there. All right. So let's see. We're going to use a book page. We're going to make a pocket. I'm going to double, no matter what I do, just because I like them to be a little bit stronger. Oh, look, I do have a reading Oh, uh, where is that book? Oh, and let's see. Oh, my dogs are barking at the sun. Julie, not a tip out or a flip out or a tip in. Um, fold it over so there's a pocket on both sides. So, yeah, it's like a double pocket, but it's... Um, I'm going to actually, nope, that's not going to be good enough. Okay, let's well, see. Well, like, if you took a, I'm thinking like envelope. If you took an envelope flap and that flap is attached to the edge of the page, it goes over the top of the page, then you have mm -hmm. a pocket on both sides of the flip part. But so, what a, am I misunderstanding her? Well, there's a way you can. You can make a page that sort of just lays on top of the top page mm -hmm. with, by putting, and I'm pulling this this way so that, because I have pictures on these. Um, okay, my dogs really are barking at them. Uh, <laughs> at the newbies? At the moon, I think. Oh, oh. oh is, it, is the eclipse starting already? Yes, it's getting dark. I thought it was tonight. No, that would be a, a lunar eclipse. This is a solar eclipse. Solar eclipse. I don't think we're in any good place to see it here. Ugh. I have a thousand books here, but I don't want to. All right. So, um, I want just a plain page and I didn't keep a plain page All right. out. All right. I'm just going to, I'm going to create something here. Julie, you what said over, fold it over, pocket on both sides. Um, what I'm thinking of may be completely different than what you're thinking of, but I'm going to do fold it over, pocket on both sides. And maybe it'll, Give me something new because I need to fix I normally do. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm just going to create something. Okay. The Shame. problem with these is that you either have to cut it in half if you're, or you have to start with a page and put things over it. Right. Um, so that, like, for instance, this one, if I were to use this page to make the pockets, I would want one on each side, but I'd have to tip the other one upside down. So, you know, mm -hmm. this could be. Okay. Let's see if I have music, music, like music. This. No, because that one's upside down. Some music, music, music. Here we go. I'm going to mix book page and music page on this one. That's a good idea because music music page doesn't necessarily. I mean, if it's a plain one, you can't tell. Um, well, you can, but okay. <laughs> I don't know who would have this on their letterhead. Ho, 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 ho. H O E. <laughs> H O E. <laughs> so this is out of a design book, guys. Who's gonna I hold this? Is my page? Um, just so that we can do this, <laughs> so I can do it with the same paper from the same. Um... Now I have another idea. Maybe. 
<clears throat> okay. Hmm. Making us think. A lot of people are doing uh, crafting live during the eclipse. <laughs> Interesting. Is it supposed to make us like more creative or something? Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Hi. Hey, Mark. I know. I'm. So I'm actually ahead. on live. He's like, "Are you going to come watch the?" Well, if you want to go out a bit, go ahead. I should check with Doug and see if he's. I don't think we're going to be able to see anything from here. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay. This is the weirdest pocket I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's happening in my head is going to come out really weird on paper. I wonder if that really needs to be done. Hmm. Let's see if I've got a paper clip. Margie doesn't want to see it anyway. <laughs> I don't think we can see anything from here. Yeah, no, I think it's an of, East Coast thing yeah, mostly. No, a lot of people that are traveling to or traveled to places where they could see it. All right. Okay. No, he wants me. I'll be back, guys. You can go all on Marianne. <laughs> I'm going to run out. Okay. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, take a picture to look at it afterwards. All right. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> let's see here. Julie, you got me thinking and about making something, creating something that I've never created before. So trying to think out of outside of what I typically do. Well, honey? Okay. Do you have glasses? <laughs> How about your polarized glasses? Might be better than nothing. Okay. Oh. It's not the same music page because it doesn't feel that there it is. Doesn't feel the same thickness. I need a thicker. I'm only going to do this singly because it felt like it's thick. Yeah, don't. <laughs> it felt like it's thick enough. 
Well, Julie, because it's still dark there and it's middle of the day here. The sun cannot be shining equally on all parts of the world at the same time, right? So, otherwise it'd be a flat world and, well, even then, how could it cover everything at the same time? <laughs> but it, it will blind, yes, that is true. Um, Doug, pro he probably still has glasses from last time. What was the last one we had? Was it a solar? No, yeah, it was a solar eclipse. Because I remember the school he was working at, and I drove down there, and we watched it together in the middle of the day, and we had the glasses. So <clears throat> he probably still has those same glasses stuck away in the drawer. I think they had minions on them, if I remember right. That's <laughs> Cute. Yeah, I stick those away to use what twice in a lifetime. But hey, when you need them, you really need them so you don't get blind. Blinded by the light. You're really blinded by the light. Honestly, I don't think we're going to be able to see enough of anything here to even know. If it is bright, don't let her look at it. Blind her. Yeah. Okay. I know it's not looking like a whole lot of anything yet, Julie. But I'm getting there. The concept is there, so... The concept is there. If I can just construct it. Yeah? It's just, it's just a big ball of fire. Oh, ooh, big ball of fire. Any cool pictures? Yeah, we don't really see a whole lot of anything but just a big ball of fire. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Going to do that. Gonna do that. All right. I'm going to sew. So my sewing machine is just right here next to me, but I know that it is off camera. So um actually I need to trim this side up so I can stay within. So I think this actually might be a really pretty one done in scrapbook paper. Oh, puppy's crying. Aw. Um, is that because she can feel the changes in the universe in the air? She can feel the changes happening in the air. All right, let's see. Stitch, what stitch? zigzag or shall I leave that one on that I was doing right there? Yeah, I think I'll leave that one on just as well. Okay. So I could set up two cameras and one camera would be right on the machine. It's literally right next to me right here, but it's just um, out of, just out of screen. I could probably even tilt this camera and you could see it, but not that it's that interesting watching the paper feed through the machine, right? Okay. Okay, I do not. I do not want that one sewn down. Okay.
I hope this works out as, as cool as it is in my mind, Julie. <laughs> sewing saves me glue <laughs> I just realized I'm not using any glue on this so this one probably would have been easier to ink it all before doing all the sewing as well but um, this one I need to sew around it just by itself that's hopefully it's sturdy enough paper to handle it by itself likes to sew. I haven't done a lot of sewing on paper things on lives because I know not everybody has a sewing machine or even cares to sew. Okay, I'm back. It's still going on, but there's only so much you can stick your head back and watch it. <laughs> yeah, kill your neck. Yep. Oh, goodness gracious. I love the paper things. I love the look. So I decided I'm going to do it a little bit more frequently. Always show a glue option as well. Everything can always be sewn or glued. It, it, it's not one or the other. Don't think you can't make something just because somebody sews it or they glue it and you want to sew it either way. I like that paper clip that looks like a key. Uh, yeah, that is cool, huh? Yeah. I just might have some of those for retreaters. Yeah. I, don't I don't remember if there's still some in there. Okay, now I'm going to put this together and sew one last. See, am I going to sew that? Yes, I am going to sew that. All right. One last seam. And it should be done. Alrighty. Besides embellishing it. Okay. Oh, I wanted to put that in before I did that. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Now I've just thought of two or three different ways to do it besides the way I did it. Um, all right, Julie. So this is over the top, over the outside edge of the, of the paper. And there's a pocket right here. 
with the closure. And if this had a little ink, it'd be a little easier to see that, that that's the flap. Um, I'll put a, a button that we've made right there, put some kind of a closure on that. And on the other side is the same thing, a flapped pocket with a pocket there. And then on the inside are two pockets without flaps on them, but just two pockets, pockets. So I was thinking about putting it over with a paper clip, um, but then I thought it could have been attached there permanently. And I thought about that before and I wanted to take a piece like this. It would need to be a little bit wider and fold it in half, need to be about twice as wide as that, and put it up here um, as I sewed, and sew that, and so then some of this would be sticking down like right there. I could glue this on right here and it would still work, and then I would glue that. Don't glue this to the pocket, but I would then glue this. See if it's sewn in, then this the bottom part would move freely. And then glue that onto the book page that you want it to be over. So you glue just this, which is floating freely underneath here. So then as you turn this, you've got pocket here, pocket here pocket under there. I grabbed a ripple, made a ripple, and a pocket underneath here. So without having done that, it will be a floater with a paper clip or a bowl clip, one or the other. And so I can just embellish it. You can flip over to me and I've got mine done too. I'm getting there. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> Trying. Fingers aren't quite working. There you are. <laughs> okay. Um, I made this out of a um, Reader's Digest book. So what I've done is I've made a pocket here, a pocket here, and then when you open it, there's a small pocket up here. Cute. But if you take it in the back, this pocket is also here. Ah. So you put it over the page the pocket. like that with, so it's got like a little tab up here at the top. And that's my over the page pocket. Now, if, if I were actually going to put this in a book, I might actually cut this page down. In fact, let's just do it like this because this one's already, I would actually maybe cut the page down like a, a quarter of an inch or a half of an inch like that so that it wasn't sticking up quite as much because you know they don't all have to be the same size but that would still have it over the page and you would still be able to see part of the um the tab so julie did either of us come close to what you had in mind <laughs> so. Good to see you, KK. Even if you are multitasking, that's totally okay. Thanks, Margie. Another great, yep. I yeah, actually cool. really like what I made. Yeah. <laughs> it's really grim and eerie. <laughs> are, are either of those even close to what you had in mind, Julie? And if not, you'll have to make what you were thinking and post it in the group. So we post can it in the group, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, somebody else have an idea of something you'd like us to make with book pages. Even if it's something we've made before, we'll try to think outside the book and, <laughs> and do it differently than we've ever done it before. We like to challenge ourselves. Yeah, they like them both. That's awesome. Thinking, thinking, thinking. DMs. Oh, okay. DMs. Are up thinking. Um, uh, what's next? What's next? Um, let's see if I weren't making, and I was just challenging you to make, what would I think of? What can you think of DM? My paper, um, paper clip, a paper clip. Of course we could do a paper clip. Folding over the side of the page with the pockets dangled down. 
but lo I love with uh, with of yours so much better. That's awesome, Julie. We'd still like to see what you did have in mind. Um, paperclip, draw a flower over the book page. Yes. Okay. And then we could watercolor on it or um, mm -hmm. color pencil on it. Um, painted background. Okay. So, um, oh, I have the time to do that and a book and a paper clip. Yep, definitely. Okay, let's see here. I need to look in here for staying with the same theme. I'm gonna cut this guy out and make him my paper clip. Let's this see, is weird looking. Good idea, Sylvia. I stayed up late one night and uh, was working on my TCs for retreat. And I think I finally decided what I wanted to do. Oh, good. Because I know you were on the fence. I'm decided, yeah. I know that I am, I'm working on mine. I've got the bases for them. These are the bases. Very cool. I've got a lot to do and it's on like, them. After that, what do I want to do? Yeah. What mm -hmm. I want to do on top of that. Yeah. Um, I just kept playing with the bases. They're mixed media. And I just kept playing with them and playing with them and going up and over the top. Um, I've like, well, got to decide what I'm going to do on the bases. All right. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm making a decision here. Um, all right. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying, but trying to think of something, a way to do a paperclip that I've never done before. Uh, mm -hmm. May 1st, RG, 1st to the 8th. So even if it got here, but well, as long as it's here before the sale, uh, which I don't, uh, I've got it written down, but I don't know right off the top of my head. Um, let me see here. I maybe trying to Does it matter what size we use. Nope. Bueno. You can do it, Margie. Doesn't matter what size. I'm going to one way or the other. Make a bookmark or paper clip, I mean. I'm looking at that bookmark there. Make a paper clip that I've never made before. Oh yes, better get busy. For the ATC. Oh, yeah, for the ATC, Sarah. <laughs> I still haven't decided what to do for the pages. So, yes, I do still need to do that. Uh, okay, let's see here. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. Um, and I've never ever sewn on a paper clip. So I'm going to sew on this paper clip. Oh, that will be exciting. I wasn't being sarcastic when I said it. <laughs> so, okay. I thought of when I said it, I was like, um, that may sound a little juicy there. I don't know. I didn't think you, you know, it's not your nature to do that, buddy. Like when I say stupid things, and you know, I don't mean them that way. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes stupid things just come out, especially when you're live. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what was that? And where did that come from? No, I've never sewn on a paper clip before, so why not, right? I hope this works. <laughs> it's a great idea if it works. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea anyway. <laughs> Let's 
Okay. So I don't know what these paper clips are for because exactly how are you supposed to use them if they're split apart like this? Oh, that's a paper clip? Yeah. Hmm. I think it's oh. supposed to hold things up. So that's paper what I'm going to say. Hmm. It's a paper clip that holds things. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I've never used it, but I'm going to try this time. Good for you. <laughs> it can mark two books at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Hold it open, maybe. I don't know. Funny. All right. Let's see here. Um, boy, I hope this works and it wasn't just a... Weird idea in my head. Okay, how do I make that turn? Gotta make that turn. I don't want to bend this totally. Oh, carp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fish. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, oh. Would have been easier with fabric instead of paper to do it this way. Can I make that work? Can I go? No. I want to get that to bend. How do I get that to bend once it gets up there? Mondo paper clip. It is a Mondo paper clip. Oh, I love my big paper clips like that. Yes. And I've got to get that to bend around the corner. Uh, I really don't want to open the entire paper clip, but I might have to. Would work great with fabric, but I'm going to make it work with paper. I guess I could have put it on. No, I couldn't have. Without opening it all up, I couldn't have put it on and then sewn it. Oh, let me put this in before it dies. Okay. Okay, come on, paper. Go around the corner for me. Come on. Just, oh, let's see. Maybe I can roll it up. Could have even gotten it a little damp. Turn it. Oh, I should have turned it into mamagami. Oh, that would have worked. And then it would go. Yeah, be a more flexible. Okay. Stay up. There, mine stands up. Oh, very cool. <laughs> See if uh, this fits in. I made a pocket in it, so I'm gonna see if this. All right, in order to work part of the back. Be bunched up here. There we go. I am actually just gonna take this and flip it over. People can write on it. You could still see it with if you use black pen. Cool. And it's just the side of a picture that really makes me. If I wasn't sewing this, uh, it'd be a whole lot easier. If I didn't sew it, a whole lot easier to just wrap it this way and then stamp the sewing on. Note to selves don't use actual sewing. <laughs> Making it way more difficult for yourself. I'm going to make it work. No, I am. I cannot give up on <laughs> it. I think it's going to work. I can't let it go. I have to make it work. But yeah, it would have been a whole lot easier either with fabric. What's daddy ham? 
<laughs> paperclip statement. <laughs> oh, Daddy Ham, the opposite of Mommy Gummy. Daddy Gam. <laughs> Daddy Gammy. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Almost there. Almost there. Actually. Do not burst through. That would have been a good reason to double it up, except if I did that, it really wouldn't have gone around the corner. I don't like the blue with that. It's got to be okay. the same. Mm -hmm. okay, so, Oops, yeah. I cut somebody's head off. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> All right. okay. Now, we could do a little bit of trim the trim on that. Okay, so should have glued some of this down. And Cuppy has settled down. Yeah, she probably was disturbed by the eclipse. They certainly. My dogs were all barking like crazy. A lot more than we do. Yep. Oops. I don't want to glue this together. I just want to glue the paper together. Not the entire paper clip. Oh, I threaded it through. Okay. All right, it's going to take, I'm going to have to embellish it in order to make it complete. Um, let's stick a piece of vellum in there so it can stick to itself. Ah. Uh, He's a sweet girl. Oops. All right. Okay. 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 What have I got in here that I can use as scroll? Oh, look at that. Rose. A big old rose. Okay. So I haven't done anything other than make this. So there's this guy who is tied up. <laughs> Don't you love those books? <laughs> <laughs> and what I did is I took the page and I made a, a triple fold on it and then I cut apart one of the pages and I liked this light so I put it on the back it's that is a paper clip I will put paper in it to prove it okay <laughs> paper clipped and I guess you could put it like that but I also made a little thing in the back that you can write a note on if you, yeah. if I wanted to like whitewash that. Yeah. And it fits in the back and it sort of shows the thing. Obviously I could put, let's see, I can do down here in this red color. So it sort of looks like that. How many people have used the pages that are out of a um, Reader's Digest book with all these beautiful paintings that are about the, um, about the book. story that is uh, being told? Anybody? I know a few guys I would tie up. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That could be taken both ways. <laughs> yes. Either good or bad. <laughs> so I'm using some more of the pages from the to sort of make it look like maybe it's on fire. I don't know. We're we're excited and playing with this one. I am really trying to use scraps that are sitting around. Well, these yeah, these were oh, boy, these I'm, were here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure my scraps are right for this, but 
I'm trying. And we have that in there. I think they're all from the same story. Okay. Usually they're all the same color, but then they have that big blue section too on it. Sarah's used them and tried painting them. She made a Rolodex out of the Reader's Digest. Oh, sweet. Oh, cool. Out of the book. Nice. There we go. Yeah. Margie's not saying which way she means it. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you, Margie. So what was the, oh, and this is another thing that I can tuck in there. So there's a little tuck. It can hold up your stuff when you add it to a piece of paper. Now, that's going to go with my weird, other weird one. So let's see. Paint on one. I like to, or do a design on it. Let me get one that is <laughs> not quite nap time yet. Yeah, I know, but close. But yeah. I think that it's probably because also because it's getting dark out, I'm having a little bit of a Yep, brain starts going, oh, it must my, be. My brain isn't quite. Yep. Our brains kind of want to follow the earth. Mm -hmm. Can't blame them. Can't brain them. Brain them. <laughs> I wish we could brain people. <laughs> really. So here's a book. It's from Flow Books. Mm. And it's got a bunch of different little things in it. Um, they're fun. They've got words and, you know, Stuff. quotes. Yeah. But they also have some really nice, um, like, starter pages in them, like this one Dare to Start with all these fly of uh, these um, leaves on them. So I'm going to look and see if there's one that I like particularly out of everything. And then I will oh. hmm. I actually like this blue font one. Let's see what else there is. I'm actually going to take the acknowledgement page out. Who needs that? Okay. And paint on that one. So what I would do with just a page like this is I don't really need to know about the authors because this is probably going to go in something else. But I'm going to go through... And I like to do this when you have a block of, of paper, I mean a block of writing, is I'm going to go through and circle some words that I like in the writing. Let's see, creative, circle that. I like the word flow. We like the word paper goodies. Um, beautiful illustrations. Creativity. Imperfection. Um, inspired. Passion for paper, mindfulness, let's 
Let's see. Irene and Astra dreamed up the idea for their own little magazine in a small attic. So I like idea. I like dreamed. Um, I like small attic. Let's see. Tiny pleasures. Um, uh, everything grows with love. Let's put grows. 50 ways to draw your beautiful. Um, let's, you're beautiful. And then it was supposed to be ordinary. <laughs> they each live with their family in Harem, Netherlands. So, um, uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my paint pen. Did it get awful quiet? I'm just listening to you. Oops, I just dropped something. That's okay. Oh. Oops, I didn't mean to do that, guys. Sorry. I did it again. I know. <laughs> didn't mean to. And you did it again. Uh, so, because this is... Let's see if I can get it a little closer so you guys can see what I'm doing. It's on green paper. I know it's hard to read from this. Let me see if I can get a light on and maybe you guys can do that. You can just hold it up really close. We can see the words. We just can't like see the what the exact word is saying. Right. Because it's small. Uh, so, oops. I circled each one of those words. I guess that light really doesn't have There you go. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yep. So you can see I circled every one of those words. Okay. Yes. You paint around all the words except for the ones you circled. Yep. Margie. So I tend to I tend to do this first with the same color as the background or as close I can get it. Um, so I don't like for instance, just slop the paint on. And these are pretty small. So I am going to actually use uh, this one which is my Jane Davenport Indian Ocean, and it is, um, I should be able to get some of that. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to start at the beginning of the, circle, and at the end of the circle to take it to that, so that you don't go over what you've circled. just getting rid of the people that wrote the book. We're keeping some of their words. <laughs> so, and then after you're finished doing this and it dries, you can go back and uncircle the words. I need to find some words to go on here. That's what I need instead. Because then those words should jump out at you. All right. Where are my words? Where are my words? Or some words. Any words. Are there words over so here? if you just read the words that are in it, it Where says creative flow, paper goodies, beautiful illustrations, creativity imperfection, inspired, passion for paper, mindfulness, dreamed, idea, small attic, tiny pleasures, grows, you're, be you're beautiful. It doesn't have to make sense. Sounds like they're happy paper people. It does happy sound like they're happy paper. paper. Mm. 
Let's see. Dry. Dry. Out, going and dragging out my container of words, which I really need to get closer to me so that I can use it more frequently. So I really like this blue splotch right here from this page. So I'm going to pull that out. And glue that there. And trying to find a word where there are no words. <laughs> <laughs> and then Not I am going to go word. above me. Container. And I am I going to grab letters. A circle. Ooh, my stomach just said, I'm hungry. Yeah, mine too. Inspiring words. Yes, I've got a whole container of them. And um, I need to, I really need to, I'm really paying attention to what things I would use more if they were close enough that I could just grab them. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely one of them. I would use words much more frequently if I could just grab the word container. Okay. And I've put a, a circle around our little buddies here. <laughs> Still not dry yet. There's one spot that's like not happy. Not drying. So let's add... Just to make together like that and just so people don't go well there's only lines in that lock I'm just gonna graphically grab some lines and do them straight in weird places on the page No. I still need to paint a page, huh? This this still needs a lot of work and embellishing, but I can do that later. I know, but I'm gonna let's see. Okay. The system just worked. The system of where did I put that? I know I moved it to a new place last week. Oh, good. Brushes at my desk. I think there's even some old water at my desk. 
Okay. Okay. We just need space. We have no space. All right. Can get on top of everything? Just need. Just use that right there. These are metallic. I haven't even used those. These are some of my favorites. Now oh, look, see, I ended up spreading some around anyway. Oh well. What's the deal here? Oh. Good. All right. <clears throat> Tiny bit of water down there. I need a whole lot more. All right, I don't have to move things or do they just disappear? <laughs> sure. um, yeah, I think that happens to everyone. <clears throat> and I chalk it up to those gremlins that Margie mm -hmm. loose. Okay, so now I'm going to grab it. And there we go. There's the one I want. And some archival ink. Maybe I'll use metallics in a minute. This over here. Okay, do we want to watch that as soon as we're done? The blue people. Okay, so I've got this giant um, butterfly stamp. This is dry. I need this to be dry. <coughs> Maybe get saturated just a little bit too much. That's not the having to do with glasses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I know I do. My cat just got to but it's not, and I put it in here. Okay, hopefully that is dry enough. And we need some archival ink. And oh, so many inks to choose from. Let's just get a basic. This might need to be inked up. It's got a knife. This I've never used this butterfly. It's so big. So let's hope we get a decent. I know should use the misty in case I don't get a decent print and put it down again. <laughs> but no. <laughs> yeah, not the cat. Cats wouldn't do that to us, would they? Got to be the gremlins. I should try this once just to see if it needs to be stamped off and get some more ink on it. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Let's get some more ink on it and do it to it. I have to finish Sylvia's challenge. I want to put some background on. I'm going to stamp a butterfly on it. And then what I would probably do is use metallic watercolors and watercolor a little bit more inside the butterfly. I just want to make sure that that is flat. And then Uh, oh, my bracelet keeps hitting that. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, it's my bracelet. Uh, yeah. All right. Get this guy down. Cats are so innocent. Yes. Why well, you shut the door when you're not in there? <laughs> Chew your paintbrushes. Oh. Oh, yeah, so um, I don't know where Lucy found one of my stencils. Uh-oh. She's never chewed anything up. She's never chewed up shoes or whatever. And she didn't chew up the stencil. But what she loves to do is anything that's plastic, like plastic grocery bags. Yeah. She likes to take them outside and hold them in her mouth and run as fast as she can around the garden. Right. So she it, feels the wind. Yeah. And the wind and the sound and everything, you know, by the side of her face. So this was one of the Stamperia super, super thin stencils, yeah. just like, like paper, yeah. less than paper thin. Yeah. I go outside and she's running around with something in her mouth. I'm like, oh, that has a pattern on it. What is that? Oh, that looks like one of my stencil patterns. Oh, it is. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, of course, then she wanted to play keep away because I wanted it. Uh, it's destroyed, but, you know. All right. So then I would go back here and probably take metallics and um, maybe do a little bit more, you know, specific places with with this guy. These aren't metallics, but I can use them bright color here and there. A little bit uh, large brush to be doing this, but we are over time and I am going to have to run. Hmm. This was a fun one though. Get us back in the mode of book pages. It's been a while. And if you guys made anything along with us, um, take pictures. That's me. Wonderful. It's exactly Margie. I couldn't get mad at her. Nah, I just can't do that. Besides, it is so cute to watch that when she's having that much fun, you know, she's not trying to be mean or, or tear stuff up or destructive. She just is truly enjoying the wind flying and it'd be better 
the stencil because it's flying through the stencil. Right. <laughs> the paper bag even. Uh, she's had plenty of opportunity to, you know, tear, uh, chew up shoes and walls and clothes, whatever. She's never chewed up anything. No. Nope. Which is pretty awesome. I feel very blessed for that. But mm. Yeah, my chihuahuas very rarely chew up things. It's usually other breeds. <laughs> yeah. She just doesn't have a... Um, What's the word? No, and, you haven't missed it yet, Glennis. She hasn't said it. Oh, oh yeah, got to do that. Got to do that now. And yeah, Lucy just doesn't have a, a mean or a destructive bone in her body, on, you know, purposefully. Okay, let me grab the paper. We'll do that before we close out here. Okay, so April. April is a different prompt uh, challenge each week. And... It's going to be different each week. Keep you on your toes as well as give you something different to make. So let's do this. Here we go. So week one, the week we just finished was to make three items, an altered paper clip, a belly band, and a tuck spot. And each one of them must have a dangle from it. Um, I saw Jen made a teeny tiny book and put the teeny tiny belly band inside it, the tuck spot, and the altered paper clip. That was really cute. And she had dangles on all of them. This week, the challenge is to make three different types of envelopes. And I won't really want you to think of this uh, like we did today. Think outside of your normal book or what it is that you do. And, and try making some different types of envelopes than you've ever made before. Create something or find something different. We've got tutorials for lots of different envelopes we've done on lives. And each of those envelopes must have a unique creative type of closure. So three envelopes, three different closures. And I'm really gonna, gonna ask you to stretch there and try to come up with an idea for a closure that you've never seen done before or that you've never done before. Um, something really, really creative. I give you a couple of ideas if I've got them still sitting right here. I did. I don't know if they're still here. I might have put them in the things for the retreat sale. And if that's the case, then your SOL. <laughs> <laughs> then they're yep, not on top. Okay, they're already down in there. Well, darn, had some, um, it's had some ideas, but I won't say them because maybe you'll think of them too. Maybe I can pull those out and post them during the week, but think, look around, look around your desk, look around your room, look around your house and look at things a little bit differently. Look at things from, um, a perspective of how could I turn that into a closure? Because you can turn a lot of cool things into a closure mm -hmm. with a little creativity and that's what we're challenging you to do this week is get creative with your closures and so three the envelopes will be easy even though we'd like you to try to um make it make an envelope unlike one you've made before yep no just washi tape closing you know a little belly band that you stick the, the tip of the of the flap in, those are things that you do all the time. No Velcro, that kind of thing. Get creative, think of something different. Um, again, just look around and look at all the little things sitting around and think, how could I turn that into a closure? You may be very surprised at what you come up with when um, you are tasked with doing something different that you've never done before. Yep. So I can hear DM's brain already going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's turning out really cool. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us today. We appreciate it. It was another fun Monday jumpstart. We do love Mondays because we get to spend them with you. And I'll work on that little butterfly there. Thanks, Sylvia. That was a great prompt. I like that. And um, I can use that. I can use that in a book. Not just tape, not just Velcro. Yep, I will add those to the um, post in the group 
and we'll be good to go. This is only week two. So if you miss week one, you still have plenty of time to catch up. So hugs and love to everybody. Like me. Yes, hugs and love to everybody. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Enjoy the eclipse. Don't hurt your eyes. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.